Hello, welcome to the economics class. Uh, today we are going to discuss about the theory of investment. So investment in simple terms refers to an addition on the stock of capital goods of a given economy. For example, uh, construction of roads, a purchase of machinery to be used in factories, purchase of aircrafts and building of airports. So in simple terms, uh, investment refers to purchase of those goods which can be used to produce other goods and services or investment is part of the process of devoting part of national income to create capital goods now we have discussed what investment is let's move on to discuss the types of investment so investment has different types uh, among which include the following so the first one is gross investment and gross investment uh, is the total addition made to the capital stock of an economy in a given period of time. So uh, when an economy purchases additional capital goods uh, to increase on its stock of capital stock, then that one will refer to it as gross investment. So the second one uh, is net investment, uh, which refers to total amount of total capital invested minus depreciation so depreciation we also refer to it as the capital consumption allowance so to get net investment we take the value of gross investment and we subtract uh, the value of depreciation the, the figure that you will remain with the one that refer to as the uh, net investment so we may also note that depreciation or consumption of fixed capital uh, refers to the fall in a value of a fixed asset due to normal wear and tear over time. So when uh, those capital goods produce goods and services, in the process of producing goods and services, they lose value and the money needed to replace uh, the, uh, the the lost value in the production of uh, in the production of goods and services, the one that you refer to as uh, capital consumption allowance so gross investment spending is total investment on new capital inputs uh, it is the total amount that the economy spends on new capital goods and then on the other side net investment uh, we get gross investment adjusted for capital consumption allowance so some new investment is always needed uh, each year to replace the one out to uh, capital goods in the in the previous slide we have discussed uh, gross investment and net investment so now let's look at the, also the difference between autonomous investment and induced investment autonomous investment is a form of investment which is not dependent on the levels of income it is influenced by other factors uh, such as climate a population growth, a labor force, and government policies. And then induced investment, on the other hand, uh, is a form of investment which depends on the level of income and the profits. So the higher the level of income, the higher the level of induced investment, and the reverse is true. Okay, uh, we are done with the discussing types of investment. So now let's look at it. Uh, its determinants. Uh, number one, we have levels of income. So we shall talk about levels of income in two ways. In uh, the first place, income influences the purchasing power of a given community. So if individuals in a given community have access to incomes or from their productive activities, then that one will influence their purchasing power so they will be able to go to the market purchase goods and services so through demand uh, entrepreneurs can allocate resources to producing those products which are uh, being uh, bought by the consumers or people want to use them for other purposes and then on the other hand so incomes also influence the level of saving so individuals with relatively higher levels of incomes they are able to save uh, a relatively bigger amount of uh, their incomes and then they use them for 
investment when they accumulate over time. So another determinant we have the rate of taxes. Uh, we all know that uh, a tax is a cost in the production process. And the, if tax rates are high, that one means that the cost of production is going to be high and indirectly it will discourage production. And on the other hand, uh, if consumers uh, find the products expensive because uh, a tax rate has been shifted to consumers in the form of higher taxes, then that one will also discourage demand and consequently it will affect production and investment will be low in the long run. So the, the, the other determinant is the rate uh, in, of interest rate on loans. So if uh, commercial banks and other financial institutions charge a higher rate on loan or on borrowing, then that one will discourage borrowing, thereby discouraging investment. And on the other hand, if the interest rates on loans are low, that one will pro encourage uh, people or the business community to acquire loans from financial institutions, uh, which will consequently lead to increase in investment. So another technical point that we can talk about is in the marginal efficiency of capital. So marginal efficiency of capital in simple terms refers to the anticipated returns on a capital asset. So what uh, an individual may anticipate as gains or profit when he or she purchases uh, a capital asset, he don't that refer to as the marginal efficiency of capital. So if uh, an individual anticipates that the returns on a capital asset will be high, that one will promote investment. And if the anticipated returns on capital assets are really low, that one will discourage investment into that asset. So our formula for calculating for marginal efficiency of capital is given by annual yields of capital asset uh, divided by supply price of capital asset times 100. So they had the marginal efficiency of capital, they had the level of investment and the lower uh, the marginal efficiency of capital will be the lower the level of investment. Okay, so let's take an example. Uh, on how we can calculate, calculate for marginal efficiency of capital. So we assume that a uh, capital asset is worth 20,000 francs and its annual yield is 2,000 francs. Then our marginal efficiency of this asset will be given by uh, now the returns on investment or anticipated returns which are 2,000 and then the supply price of our capital asset, which is 20,000, to multiply it by 100. So our answer will be equal to 10% uh, 10, 10 So this means that uh, every year, this capital asset will be able to give back 10% of its value. Uh, thus, the marginal efficiency of capital is the percentage of profit expected from a given investment on a capital asset. So, uh, additional determinants of investment in an economy may also include business expectation. So, if the business community anticipates that uh, business is going to be good or demand for their items in the near future is going to increase, then that one uh, acts as a stimuli to uh, make them take more investments so that they can uh, meet the demands of their customers in the near future. And then if they expect business not to be good, then they will not invest. And the, we have the level of technology. Uh, we know that technology refers to the uh, production methods which are used in production of goods and services. So. Uh, innovation and innovation uh, may lead to more efficient methods of production. So when there is more efficiency in production, that cuts the production costs and that will really make, enable uh, farms to make more profits. So that one can encourage investment since uh, entrepreneurs know that they are going to make more money if they invested in purchase of such 
technology. So we have the market size. Uh, we know that uh, farms produce for the market and not for themselves. So if there is uh, anticipation that market is going to expand for their items, that one will be a stimuli for farms to increase investment so that they can meet the demand on the market in the near future. However, if the market is small or if it is reducing, that one discourages investment. So other key components that we may talk about that influence uh, investment is the government policies in form of taxation and subsidization. So we know that taxes increase production costs. If government levies a tax, then that one may be shifted to consumers in the form of higher prices. So, and then we know that higher prices discourage uh, purchase or farm normally consumers want to buy from the cheapest source always. So a tax on a commodity increases the cost of production, which also leads to an increase in price of a given commodity, which eventually leads to low aggregate demand if many items have been affected. So then on the other side, subsidies, for them, they, lead, they lower the cost of production and they enable consumers or buyers of those items which are subsidized to access them at a lower price, thereby increasing their demand. So uh, normally investment may increase in production of those items which are subsidized and less investment will be directed to producing items which are taxed highly. So the next determinant is the nature of social and economic infrastructure. So we have, we all know that infrastructure, uh, those are the facilities which aid production, info, uh, physical facilities which aid uh, production. You can take an example of electricity distribution, take an example of roads, uh, we take an example of um, uh, banking services, among others. So if such facilities exist, then uh, farms may use them to produce or to facilitate production like roads, uh, like taking products on the market, uh, farms will need to use roads or if farmers plant their full crops somewhere in a rural area and government uh, upgrades roads and they can aid movement or transportation of food from the rural area to town where they can find the market then that one may influence investment in agriculture and in so on in other activities then you have the nature of entrepreneurial abilities uh, like for now the government of rwanda is promoting entrepreneurial studies in secondary schools and higher institutions of learning so this is because the end result is to see investment in rwanda increasing from uh, the native citizens so if a given country has higher levels of uh, people in that country have higher le uh, levels of entrepreneurial abilities then they will be uh, likely to participate in investment or investing in different activities and when uh, people in a given country have low entrepreneurial skills, then they will not invest or the investments will be too low.